protesters are demanding that Egypt follow South Africa's lead and file a genocide lawsuit against Israel with the International Court of Justice to bring about global justice. A greater drive for legal action in the world arena is being signaled by this approach, which enhances the continuing attempts to resolve past grievances and seek justice for claimed crimes. The accusation of genocide by Israel against the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip has been brought before the International Court of Justice by activists who have urged the Egyptian government to join forces with South Africa. In an online petition, a group of concerned citizens, NGOs, human rights organizations, and political parties from around the world pleaded with Egypt to follow the protocols laid forth in the United Nations Genocide Convention. A quick ceasefire and the continuation of the Israeli military onslaught in Gaza are the primary objectives. In addition, the petition requests that Egypt form a committee of the Prosecutor General, diplomats, journalists, and stakeholder and syndicate group representatives. The Israeli occupation perpetrated atrocities, and this committee is responsible for recording and recounting those atrocities in great detail. A formal memorandum will be prepared using the gathered material and submitted to the International Court of Justice. Egypt plays a crucial role in Middle Eastern politics due to its historical connections to the area, diplomatic links with Israel, and strategic location near the Gaza Strip, as well as its proximity to the Strip. The case will be heard by the Court of Justice, which is scheduled to hold its first session next week in The Hague, Netherlands. Former Egyptian Vice President and former head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Mohamed El Baradai recently made a statement in which he slammed Arab nations for choosing to stay out of the ICC proceedings against Israel. El Baradai, expressing his opinions on the platform, decried the choice of these Arab states as an ineradicable mark of shame, stressing that it failed to accurately reflect the will of their people. This famous meeting with Jacques Chirac, when I went with Hans Blix, my colleague, we were complaining to him uh, that we do not have any evidence. Where is the beef? Towards the year's end of 2023, South Africa formally requested that the International Court of Justice begin proceedings against Israel. According to the South African court's argument, Israel's behavior in Gaza violates its pledge to prevent and punish genocide as stated in the convention. Among the claims is the inability to prevent the genocide that allegedly took place in Gaza at the hands of Palestinians. The supposed inaction in prosecuting high-ranking Israeli officials for their open and public incitement to genocide is one example. The application ends by requesting that the ICJ maintain the interim measures that have been put in place to demand that Israel immediately cease its armed operations in Gaza. The bulk of the application is devoted to stating South Africa's position that Israel is failing to fulfill its obligation to outline the convention. Genocide, according to the convention's definition, includes murder committed to wipe out an entire national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. Israeli military operations targeting Gaza since October 7 constitute genocide, according to South Africa's appeal. Israel has inflicted tremendous harm, according to the application, killing approximately 21,110 Palestinians, including more than 7,729 children, and leaving an additional 7,708 people missing and thought dead under the debris. More than 355,000 Palestinian houses were damaged or destroyed, and over 55243 additional Palestinians were injured, according to the report. The appeal claims that no armed attack, no matter how severe, may explain or excuse breaches of the Genocide Treaty, while denouncing Hamas's target of people and hostage-taking on October 7th. Despite centering on events that have transpired since October 7, 2023, the application delves into the larger framework of Israeli policies towards Palestinians, covering 75 years of apartheid, 56 years of violent occupation of Palestinian land, and 16 years of siege of Gaza. To protect the Palestinian people, South Africa has requested a quick hearing to seek expert measures and interim remedies, which are only allowed in exceptional cases while the court processes continue. This is in response to the dire situation in Gaza. In particular, South Africa demands that Israel end its military operations in and against Gaza without delay, 
prevent its citizens from publicly inciting genocide, and punish those responsible for following the Convention's requirements if they do so. Furthermore, it demands that Israel refrain from withholding food and water and reverse any applicable directives that might lead to their denial. Additionally, South Africa has asked that Israel keep all relevant materials safe, report on the steps it has taken to comply with the audit's interim measures, and avoid doing anything that would make the situation worse or drag out the litigation. Bolivia has also declared its national support for South Africa's historic complaint against Israel at the International Court of Justice over the continued genocide in Gaza in response to this event. Public hearings in The Hague are set to begin on January 11th. South Africa has taken a historic step in defending the Palestinian people, an endeavor that the world community that lusts for a decent existence should join, according to a statement released by the Bolivian government on January 7th. Along with other countries, including Bangladesh and South Africa, Bolivia pleaded with the International Criminal Court on November 17th to investigate alleged crimes committed against the Palestinian people, including genocide. The Rome Statute created the Autonomous International Criminal Court, which hears cases involving specific persons. On the other hand, as a judicial institution of the UN, the International Court of Justice hears cases brought by member nations such as South Africa and Israel, who are bound by their UN membership. Decisions made by the ICJ, which settles disputes between states, are binding on all parties. The legal lawsuit in Pretoria is based on the 1948 Genocide Convention, to which both South Africa and Israel are state parties. This momentum movement has received support from other nations, including Malaysia, which is seen as a positive development towards holding Israel legally accountable for its crimes in Gaza and the occupied Palestinian lands. The lawsuit has also received backing from Turkey and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. The 57-member group has declared that the Israeli occupation of Palestinian territory and the indiscriminate targeting of civilian populations, including those who have been wounded, murdered, displaced, or denied necessities, constitutes mass genocide. Jordan has announced its support for South Africa and the ICJ, which is an old worthy occurrence since the country entered into a peace pact with Israel 30 years ago. Important legal documents can also be prepared with this assistance. On top of all this, on January 8th, over 900 different groups, including popular movements, political parties, unions, and others, issued a joint call asking all governments to declare their support for South Africa's ICJ application and intervene. How about you? Have you seen our video? How do you feel about countries showing unity by supporting South Africa in its lawsuits against Israel? Post your thoughts in the space provided. Stay tuned for more thrilling videos in the future by subscribing to our channel.